So in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose a parasitic draw on the IPC-DIC uh, circuit on this 2007 Chevy 3 quarter ton LBZ diesel truck. Although this problem seems to be in a lot of different GM vehicles, you can use my solution to fix it. So I'm going to show you how to diagnose the problem and then how to solve it with just a simple wiring uh, modification. The unique thing about my solution is that it's easily reversible so that you can take it off without any modification to the existing circuit. Uh, some other solutions that I've seen out there require you to totally modify the truck's wiring or the vehicle's wiring, which I'm going to avoid. So let's take a look at how I'm going to accomplish this. So to diagnose the problem, I remove the IPC-DIC fuse, which is a 10 amp fuse, which is located right here. You can locate the fuses by using the map that's on the inside of the cover and using a small pair of needle nose pliers. And so with the fuse removed, I have my multimeter here set to milliamps. The truck has been off for hours, in fact over a day. And with the fuse gone, I can go ahead and place uh, the wires in here where the fuse went and as you can see it's drawing over 300 milliamps and that continuous draw is what's going to eventually wear the batteries down and then the vehicle won't start and this problem is obviously accentuated in the winter time when battery capacities drop due to cold weather and you'll get to the point where the starter won't even engage because there's really nothing there so the solution that I'm going to show you next is how to go ahead and fix this problem so that it won't be any more bothersome and then draw the battery down. So here's a schematic of my solution. Um, what's required is to take the IPC-DIC fuse location and then split that out and then bring that 10 amp fuse away from that spot and then go through a, a relay. And this relay is tied to a different fuse and this different fuse is actually the backup slash LP 20 amp fuse that is only on when the key is on. So essentially what this circuit does is whenever the key is on then it energizes the IPC-DIC circuit. So that way it cannot have, there's no way that it could have a parasitic draw when the, uh, the key is off as you saw before. So once again when the key turns on we come out here, energize this relay, and then this relay provides power to the IPC-DIC circuit. And when the key is off there is no power there. So you might ask yourself, well, is there really a reason why uh, GM wanted to have the circuit energized? And from what I understood, this parasitic draw, it, the problem could emanate from an issue with the cluster. And I've seen people have to replace their cluster to get rid of the parasitic draw. It could be something else. But this circuit is also part of the OnStar system. And perhaps GM wanted the OnStar system on at all times and I haven't had the OnStar system on this, uh, turned on on this vehicle in over 15 years, so it's not an issue. So you might want to think about that, but um, you know, at this point what I'm going to do is implement this and the parts that you're going to need to do that are first of all this little fuse extender. So this is what, it go, what goes in right here in, the, um, in this circuit and then it allows you to externalize the fuse that was actually there, which is going to go in this lower part and this upper part is an, a new 5 amp fuse that we're going to add that is part uh, is, is there to energize the coil of the relay. And so this part is going to need to be uh, incorporated. And then we have this part right here. This is what goes in here, which is where the IPC-DIC fuse was. You pull that fuse out, put this in its place, and then put um, a 20 amp fuse in here instead and wire that to the normally open contact of the relay. And so therefore you're going to also need an automotive relay like this. I happen to have these sitting around, but I'll show you a, a link to all three of these things on Amazon. Uh, when you get the kit for um, the fuse extender, this one right here, it comes in uh, a pack of, I believe, four. It comes with a bunch of fuses, including a 5 amp fuse, which is what you're going to need right there. So you don't need anything there. You will need a 10 amp, uh, you know, old style blade fuse for what goes in here because this pops open and that fuse goes in that spot. So when you wired it all together the result looks like this. So here's the relay and those are the four wires that you see here. The two wires for the coil and the two wires for the normally open contact. That includes a ground which we're going to have to ground uh, to the truck obviously. 
And then here is where that 20 amp blade fuse goes, right? Or sorry, 10 amp blade fuse goes right there. And then um, this is what goes in the IPC DIC slot. And then of course, on the other end of this thing, if I can find it, there it is right there. Here is uh, the 5 amp fuse that is necessary for the coil of the relay here. And this 20 amp fuse will go right here, which is currently right now in the truck. So I'm going to pull that, put it there. So as far as the truck is concerned, there's nothing changing as far as the wiring of the truck. That's the key point of this. In, in, in a matter of 30 seconds, I can take this circuit off and put it back to the way it was. And that's the important part of this solution is that it's easily uh, uh, revertible, whereas other solutions are more intrusive and, and permanent. With this solution right here, you can easily remove it and you're back to where you were um, if you're worried about modifying or you know changing the OEM specs of your truck. So, so this is the completed uh, circuit using the components that I showed you and this schematic right here. And so it's going to take a little bit of wiring, obviously. You're going to probably have to know how to put a couple connectors on wires. I hope you know how to do that. Uh, other than that, there's a splice here and a splice here. Uh, and, and you know, just following this diagram will get you to where you need to be. And so now let's go ahead and, and, and uh, implement this in the truck and see how it works. So now we're ready to implement the change. We're going to open up the fuse container, put that aside. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to do is go ahead and put the ground wire in. And the ground wire goes right here. There's a ground that goes from the hood to the main chassis and there's a 10 millimeter nut there. I'm going to remove that and zip that off. All right, with the 10 millimeter nut removed, I'm just going to go ahead and place the ground onto that spot. We're going to put that back real quick here. that aside and now with this I'm going to take the relay I'm going to mount that right here um, in just a second but before I do that let's go ahead and remove the two fuses that we need to remove this is the 20 uh, amp BU uh, fuse right there that comes out we're going to put that back here in just a second and the IPC DIC fuse is right here that one can be removed and you don't need that one again because we've got the 10 amp blade fuse that I showed you earlier Okay, so when you take the 20 amp fuse that we removed from the BU fuse or circuit, that has to go here uh, underneath so that that fuse is now active again when we put this back in. And this 5 amp fuse, of course, is what powers the relay. So now we're just going to put that in its spot right there. Okay, so that's secure. And this goes where the, uh, the trouble circuit is the IPC DIC uh, um, parasitic draw and now in here of course is the 10 amp fuse that we replaced uh, here so that's now here so all the fuses are the same with this aside that's all you have to do the circuit here is secure and now I'm just going to go ahead and use my drill driver to put a shallow uh, screw here that um, is going to go into the plastic to hold the relay. So I'm just going to put that in. There we go. Okay, the relay is now secure. The, uh, the ground wire, you could put a couple maybe uh, tie bands to uh, keep it out of the way there. And then with this inside, all we have to do is go ahead and put the cover back on. And these wires don't, won't get affected by the cover at all. You can just go ahead and snap the cover back on. And that's the solution. So now this relay will energize only when the key is on and the parasitic draw is gone. So I hope this video helps you out. Uh, and if you have this problem, please make a comment. I'm interested to see what's out there. And again, in 30 seconds, I can remove all this stuff and put the truck back to the way it was. And, and that's the reason I put this video together. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.